Thanks very much, Fiona, uh, for the introduction. Um, right. So I'll start off just by briefly talking about, because we've already heard quite a lot about this already in this morning session, which is really helpful to me, actually, um, about appetite and food intake and the gut-brain interaction. And I really wanted to just highlight the fact that um, these gut-derived hormones are so important in, in modulating the central effects that we see within the hypothalamus um, that lead to the modulation of feeding behaviours. Um, and obviously, in this picture, a neuroscientist has gone on to draw this uh, because they've really minimized the, uh, the role of the gut and the vagal afferent. But I really wanted to point out that the, the vagal afferent can actually receive direct uh, input and stimulation by hormones that are released from the gut as a result of nutrient and food intake. And we're really interested in, in um, the cellular mechanisms and also the neuronal mechanisms that are involved here. So as a result of food intake, um, we see in lean individuals uh, um, a, a, a release of satiety hormones as the food travels through the GI tract. And this is what uh, res results in a person feeling full and, and stopping, their, stopping eating. In obese individuals, um, they tend to eat more, of course. But what is really unfortunate is that the level of satiety hormones that are released um, as a result of a food, as a result of food intake is significantly diminished, and so their um, central responses are also dampened, and therefore they keep eating more. As a result of rheumatoid gastric bypass, we see lots of different changes, which I'll uh, touch on in a minute, and and one of those is actually um, changes to food preferences. That's why we put up a salad here. Um, and what's really interesting is, as a result of this bypass surgery, there is a surge in the release of satiety hormones. And PYY and GLP-1 are, are two hormones that are really important here and probably mediating some of the, quite a lot of the effects that we see in terms of appetite reduction. So there are, like I said, quite a few different mechanisms of action at work with rheumatoid gastric bypass we're interested in two, but I'll just go through the oops, just go through the others. Um, so there's an increase in food transit, of course, because there's a shunting of nutrients from the um, from the small pouch that is made directly to the proximal colon. There's increase in bile acids, which is really important in mediating these effects. There's changes to brain signaling, like I said. There's changes to food preferences and food choices. There's obviously changes in gut microbiota. I think there's lots of evidence to show that now. Um, but we're interested in, of course, how these increase in hormones occur, especially GLP and PYY, and also the changes that occur to peripheral neurons as a result of this surgery. And so we've previously shown that nutrient sensing receptors, and these are just a couple of the ones that we've looked at so far, um, including ones for amino acids, um, and fatty acids are, exp are expressed throughout the GI tract, all the way from the stomach down to the rectum. And what was really interesting for us from these studies um, was that the uh, lower GI tract, specifically from the colon all the way down even to the rectum, has a lot of these receptors that are expressed, suggesting that they, at this region, is capable of sensing and responding to nutrients which may end up there. And of course, that is one of the ways that rheumatoid gastric bypass works. And so our question was, um, firstly, can changes to the luminal environment actually alter the expression of, uh, firstly, the nutrient sensing receptors, and whether the luminal environment has an effect on the expression of L cells and enterochromaffin cells that we're also interested in? And the other question we, we wanted to answer using our, this rheumatoid gastric bypass was to ask if there are changes that the changes to the luminal content alter perhaps the neuronal innovation within the colonic mucosa. And so to do this, we teamed up with Prof. Hans Batud and his group um, at Pennington Biomedical Research Center in Louisiana, and they have established a mouse rheumatoid gastric bypass model that is quite robust. Um, it has it cause it's made by use, using a small gastric pouch. Um, there's low mo uh, mortality. The mice are able to eat after 24 hours, and we see sustained weight loss. And what I would really like to point out is uh, the fact that we use the mice at 12 weeks, so at this point here, and there are four different 
groups that we looked at. So there is a lean group. So these were um, mice that were fed chow, so they will be referred to as chow. There was a sham operated group, so that's shown in red. So you can see the body weight of this group is, is, uh, is quite high, they're obese. They've just had a sham operation, so that's why they call sham. There's obviously the RYGB group, so that's in blue. So these mice were obese and they've lost weight as a result of the RYGB procedure. And there's also a weight, weight match group, uh, which you probably can't see so much because they're essentially the same as the RYGB. The only difference is that they actually lost weight because of calorie restriction rather than having surgery. So from the tissue that we obtained from the study, uh, we did two different types of experiments. We did um, quantitative real-time PCR, so collected the colonic tissue, extracted RNA, converted to cDNA. And then we used these TACMAN array microfluidic cards, which allow us to look at a, a whole number of genes in a high-throughput mechanism using um, a via 7 real-time qPCR machine. We also did immunohistochemistry, so fixed tissue, cut sections, did fluorescent labeling, um, and then we captured images, so we counted the number of cells, and we also counted the number of pixels when we're um, trying to quantitate the neuronal innovation. So firstly, starting off by looking at the expression levels of gut hormone, the gut hormones and peptides that we we're interested in, uh, what you can see along the top uh, is the mRNA <coughs> level of glucagon, PYY, and TPH1. And although we see some decreases and increases within the groups, these are not actually st statistically significant um, at this mRNA level. But when we looked at the number of L cells, so we actually did pro so protein quantification essentially, and localization using antibodies, what you can see is uh, these sort of typical um, L cells that contain GLP-1. Um, and within the sham and the chow, there is no real significant difference. So we've actually counted the cells here. But with the RYGB group, we see an increase in the number of GLP-1 containing cells. So you can see these cells here within a single crypt are increased. When we looked at um, enterocrimfin cells, so using 5-HT as a marker, uh, we found that actually the sham group, so the obese mice, actually did have an increased level of enterocrimfin cells compared to the chow. So you can see the distinctive uh, enterocrimfin cells with these processes coming out. Um, uh, and you can see these, these have these distinctive, distinctive uh, cell type shapes. And when we compared to these overall with the RYGB, there was no real difference between the sham and the RYGB, and it can, but there is obviously increase in the RYGB com compared to the chow. So moving on to the expression of short-chain fatty acid receptors um, following RYGB, what you can see with GPR41, which uh, tends to prefer sensing propionate, we see an increase in the RYGB group compared to the sham uh, but no difference in the GPR43, which uh, prefers to sense butyrate. So perhaps there's this increased propionate sensing compared to butyrate sensing as a result of this surgery, which may actually reflect changes to the microbial environment. We also looked at the expression of medium and long-chain fatty acid receptors. So starting off with GPR40, we see that there's an increase in the RYGB group of the expression of this receptor, which can uh, respond to linoleic acid. We also see an increase in GPR84, which, uh, can bind, uh, which is activated by lauric acid in the RYGB group, and also GPR119. Uh, which uh, can bind to lipid metabolites and, and also oleal ethanol amide. So this is increased, this expression is increased in the RYGB group. Interestingly, we did not see any significant increases with the GPR120 receptor, which binds to alpha linolenic acid, and GPR120 has been shown to be important in, in, um, in, in weight gain. A few other receptors we looked at, so we looked at also uh, this amino acid sensing receptor, GPR 93, 92, 93. Um, there was no change in this. We also looked at T1R3, and although they looked like there were changes, was, these were not statistically significant. And T1R3 can um, sense sweet and umami depending on its, um, its partner, partner transporter. Um, but TGR5, interestingly, we saw increased in, as a result of RYGB, and, and TGR5, of course, binds to bile acids. 
When we looked at the overall neuronal innervation, we saw that this, uh, we used a marker, a PGP 9.5, which is a pan neuronal marker. Um, we looked at the three groups, CHAR, SHAM, and RYGB, and we found there was no difference. So it's a bit hard to see on this screen, unfortunately, but you can see these are the cribs, and these are the neuronal endings between the cribs. Um, and, and when we quantitated this as a number of mean number of pixels, uh, within the three groups, where you can see that there is no difference. We also looked at the expression of GLP-1. So GLP-1 looked to have neuronal type expression. We actually did do co-localization and saw GLP-1 receptor expressed on PGP um, positive neurons. Um, and as you can see, these are uh, GLP-1 receptors found in and around the CRIPS. Um, again, we did not find any difference when we actually quantitated this. <coughs> Um, by looking at pixel counts. So in summary, uh, we can say that the changed luminal environment induced by rheumatoid gastric bypass changes the expression of L cells within the colon. And also we see specific expression of nutrient sensing receptors that are altered as a result of this surgery. We didn't see, um, with the overall neuronal innovation, innovation and GLP-1 receptor expression, the clinic in the colonic mucosa, does that not actually change in response to diets, so the high fat diet, for example, or rheumatoid gastric bypass? So this implies that the gut becomes hypersensitive to nutrients after RYGB, but only at the level of enteroendocrine cells and, and nutrient sensing receptors and not neurons. So obviously lots of future research questions, lots of things to find out. Um, firstly, why are only specific nutrient receptors upregulated? Is this a reflection of the microbiota? And is this microbiota dependent? And, and that's sort of what I touched on earlier with the changes in one sort of short-chain fatty acid receptor and not another. Is uh, the specific nutrient receptors influenced by the nutrient content or the makeup of the diet? Does that, does that influence um, which type of receptors are upregulated? Um, and also, are there really specific receptors that are optimal for appetite reduction via hormone release? Is there some, are there, are there a group or a combination of receptors that seem to be better at activating, for example, L cells? In terms of the neuronal expression, I mean, again, the microbiota um, comes into play here. Is the, is the neuronal expression altered by some other means other than perhaps the luminal content um, as a, a as um, we, we measure by diet, is it perhaps to do with the specific microbiota and the environment there? Um, also, we'd like to look at the neuronal innovation of vagal afferent endings as modulated by luminal content by looking at, for example, the calretinum positive endings. And with that, I'd just like to finish and thank uh, everyone in my lab and also the, acknowledge my funders. Thanks.